Welcome back to another instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week, where in this video I will be talking about the subantarctic snipe, dumpy ground birds that have relatively longer bills and legs than other New Zealand snipe species. I hope you enjoy. They are the only snipe species known from the Auckland, Antipodes and Campbell Islands, with each island or group of islands having its own subspecies, leading to them having a great deal of diversity. As mentioned earlier, they do have quite long legs and bills, which could be an adaptation to their more windswept and cold environment, as since soil in many areas would be more solid due to frost and cold temperatures, this would help them better able to reach food. Their coloration is similar to the much smaller Chasm Island snipe, also with them possessing a shorter bill, with Snares Island snipes being darker overall and being stockier. The three subspecies of these snipe all differ slightly in size, markings and genetics, with the Auckland Island snipe having by far the greatest genetic variation due to them not going through as large population bottlenecks as the other two, and this is mirrored in the variation in their size and plumage. The Antipodes Island snipe are darker than the Auckland Island birds, and their plumage is also more yellow than all the other populations, especially ventrally. The Campbell Island birds are the smallest, also having the darkest back feathers, and having a pinkish buff cast to the belly feathers. They are around the size of a blackbird, coming in at lengths of 23cm and weighing about 110 grams in weight. They are found throughout vegetated areas, including tussock grasslands, shrubland and low forest, preferring dense ground cover, and probing around for a range of invertebrates. Birds are most often seen when disturbed at close range, rising up to 50 metres on their whirring wings in altitudes before pitching down into cover, although they seldom fly. Their breeding is poorly known, although what is known is still very interesting, with them having nests that consist of one to two eggs, with incubation being shared, and it is also likely that each adult cares for one chick independent of its mates, as almost all family groups encountered are usually that of a single adult with a single chick. They are largely quiet during the day, being most vocal at night, also performing the nocturnal courtship Hakawai display, as has been heard on the channel before. The sound is made by vibrating their tail feathers as they dive at high speeds, with the damage on their tail feathers being readily seen on birds in the hand. They are relatively tame, and because they nest on the ground, they are at a high risk of predation by mammalian predators. They are absent from the main Auckland Island, where feral pigs and cats continue to persist, and were also eliminated from Campbell Island through Norway Rat, and were also made scarce on Enderby and Rose Islands in the presence of cattle, rabbits and mice. When these animals on the latter were eradicated, they quickly became more abundant, and it goes to show how pest control can help these birds out. Another thing about these birds is that they include both the first New Zealand snipe to be discovered, as well as the most recent. The Auckland Island subspecies was discovered on Enderby Island in November 1840, during the Erebus and Terror Expedition under Captain James Clark Ross. The Campbell Island subspecies on the other hand was not known to exist before a chance discovery on sheer sided 20 hectare Jack Mart Island in 1997 which after the eradication of rats on nearby Campbell Island in 2001, this critically endangered form naturally recolonised the main island, completing a remarkable story of discovery and recovery within less than a decade. Few estimates have been made on their population, although one from Adams Island in the Auckland Islands group is likely to hold tens of thousands of birds, based on recorded densities of at least four birds per hectare on other islands. Hopefully then, this increase will allow them to continue to survive well into the future, and that someday their descendants may be reintroduced back to the mainland to replace the now unfortunately extinct South Island form. And with that, I thank you for watching this instalment of New Zealand's Bird of the Week. For next time, you are now able to vote for the Brown Teal, the largest and only flighted member of the three brown plumaged teals endemic to the New Zealand region, which were once widespread but are now currently endangered. With that, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be.